Well, I think we're live. This is the show before the show. This is John Wren. We're going to start at 10 o'clock, but I wanted to come on a little early and make sure I knew which button did what. And uh, we'll start in about four minutes. If you're here early, too, welcome. Broadcasting from our world headquarters high atop 1881 Bucktail Boulevard, in the beautiful University Station apartments. I've got the top unit on the corner. I've got a view of the University of Denver and Pikes Peak and Mount Vernon, and it's a great place. And uh, if you ever want to stop by, give me a call. I'd be glad to show it to you. And uh, we're going to, I think, I'm going to start meeting with two or three people here once a week who are really serious about uh, starting a small group. So I'm going to be talking about that uh, on the air today. We hope that people watch this all over the world. We like to see these little groups spring up everywhere. Uh, I think I may know more about startup than anybody in the world at this point. I've been meeting with people who are starting, uh, especially starting new businesses, but starting new projects, new campaigns, new careers for a long time. And I've learned a lot. I started early. I watched my dad start a new business. And, uh, if you're here watching early, uh, we'll be starting in about two minutes. Uh, this is John Wren's online yeah, how to start a little group in cooperation with your local chamber or other group right where you're at. It helps strengthen your neighborhood, your community. And uh, each week we'll be talking to somebody who has done just that. Today we'll be talking to the person I know best about that. And uh, next week, maybe it's you. Go out, start something, call me, and uh, we'll put you on the show next week to tell us how you did it. You know, uh, startup experience is best served fresh. You know, it becomes the standard platitudes given a little bit of time. Uh, I'm a great fan of Amar Bahidi uh, from India. His father was an entrepreneur also. He grew up seeing how his dad did it. And so he went to uh, Harvard, became a professor there, and researched carefully how did businesses really start. And what he found is that Businesses don't start the way the SBA says that they should start. Uh, they just don't. You know, in 1953, uh, Dwight Eisenhower, uh, I think with good intentions, but maybe the people influencing him maybe didn't have such good intentions. I don't really know that for sure. But at any rate, I know that they came up with a veterans home loan program. And then out of that grew the idea of, well, why don't we do that with veterans who have started businesses, too? And that became the Small Business Administration. And they applied big business techniques to startups, and it just does not work. And they've been doing it ever since. Um, we got about a minute to go and uh, a lot to talk about today. Uh, when I run out of things to say, I stop. We may stop before 1030 or... Uh, you know, it's possible we could run over a few minutes. We'll see. So it, it's 1030, and you know what that means. It's time for John Wren's online Idea Cafe Startup Workshop uh, and Praxis Incubator. We're going to be talking about Praxis Incubator, the new component of our meetings. Uh, we just had our first meeting with it yesterday. No one laughed out loud. Uh, they seem to think it's a good idea, and we'll see how it goes. Making some changes in the Idea Cafe format, too. I'm going to talk about those today. And uh, I want to talk about our model for startup. We'll probably just start with this. You know, it, it's, I've been just talking about startup for over two decades. And what's become absolutely clear is that that's just not enough. It has to be in the context of what comes before startup and what comes after startup. Our, our primary focus will remain startup because I think that's where there is a real shortage of good information. But we're going to cooperate even more fully with uh, others who help more with the other parts of the process. 
because really it's about uh, we recover. You know, we have some sort of a setback, usually. Uh, usually a failure leads to an eventual success. That's just a fact. That very few people uh, start off uh, and just go straight up. They, they usually have to try something, fail, recover, and then start again. So I call my little thing, Daring Mighty Things. Uh, I subtitle it, The Simplest Way to Start Your First or Next New Business. And just because you've had a business and it did not work out, it doesn't mean that you're not going to eventually take that experience and uh, start something spectacular. So to do that, we have to recover. Uh, now, when I played football for Coach Don Day, who just recently passed away, he's a great guy. But when I played football for Coach Day, we would have drills on the blocking sled, and we would hit and recover, hit and recover, hit and recover. That's how I think about recovery is getting back up on our feet. And one of the most powerful ways to do that is uh, with 12-step recovery. And most of the professional groups uh, have borrowed heavily from it. But it begins with the recognition that on our own, we can't do very much. And in whatever way we look at that, and some, some people look at it just as the power of the little group that they've gathered together around them, the power of the community. Somebody said, if you, uh, you don't think you're powerless, go through a brick through a policeman's windshield. Don't do that. That's just, you know. But if you did that, you'd find out pretty quickly that uh, you're absolutely powerless to stop what's going to happen next. But we have to recover where we, in a way, win by losing because we recover, we get back up, we start again, and uh, that's the startup. So recover, and we recover first, and we really recover last in whatever it is that we get going, and we recover always. It's an ongoing process during the startup. But recover, it's not linear, but recover, start, grow, and flourish. And flourish is from Martin Seligman's uh, book called Flourish. He's past president of the American Psychological Association, a, a renowned psychologist, and this book, Flourish, is very powerful. And uh, flourishing has five components, according to Seligman. He uses the acronym PERMA, P-E-R-M-A. P is that positive affect. He's been called the happy doctor, and that's part of it. That you feel good about life. So how do you feel right now? You know, are you looking forward to what's ahead, or are you dreading it? If you're dreading it, recover. So. P-E is engagement. Do you have work that you really, really enjoy doing so deeply that you sort of lose track of time, that Chechaminga's flow experience that uh, athletes experience from time to time, that we all, most of us, I think all, but I think most for sure experience this flow from time to time. So how's that with you? Do you when's the last time you experienced that? Our relationships with other people, uh, M, meaning to life. Do we have a broader picture than just, you know, our nose, what's right in front of us? Do we see the big picture? And then A, are we accomplishing what we've set out to accomplish? Might be to become bridge champion. If you want to, you know, start playing bridge and become the world champion, you know, are you making progress towards that? So those PERMA uh, is an acronym that helps us do a gut check to see if we need to go back and recover, and we always do, there's always something that we need to be working on. Now, uh, we'll talk more about that in another show, but this is the model for uh, to start, grow, and flourish that we're going to start talking about more and more. Now, that recovery piece is very important, and the Sacred Heart Jesuit Retreat House is uh, here in Colorado and Sedalia. It's between Littleton and Castle Rock. It's just a few minutes outside of Denver, but it feels like you're a million miles away. If uh, you feel the need to recover uh, in the middle of what you're doing, you kind of need a break to get going again. You're starting a new project or campaign or, or you need to. Or maybe it's you need to start a brand new career. Maybe, it's, maybe you're thinking of starting a brand new business and you need to recover, get back up on your feet, charge your battery. Great retreat coming up at Sacred Heart Jesuit Retreat House in Sedalia, Colorado, 
And uh, that is uh, coming up next weekend, uh, May 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. And I encourage you to go, especially if you're new to 12-step recovery, but also if you are very experienced because we can always sharpen the saw just a little bit sharper. And sometimes it's easier to sharp, sharpen it with the uh, stone that's already been used a little bit. So the 12 steps are something maybe to reconnect with. If you find yourself in the 12 step program, but it's lost its vitality for you. Now, starting an Idea Cafe startup workshop and Praxis Incubator, here's the way to do it. Attend one. Just come and observe. Then lead one. Take an ongoing group and you be the leader. And then start one. And uh, we'll help you do it. Now, to attend one right now, you're going to have to come to Denver, Colorado, here in the metro Denver area. And uh, if you call me, I'll connect you with that. We hope that some who watch this, maybe you're having a vacation plans that are going to involve Denver. You can plan to be here at a time that we're having an Idea Cafe startup workshop here. But come and attend a meeting here. And uh, if you can, then lead one of the meetings here. If you call me, I'll help arrange that. And then go back to your community and start one in cooperation with your local chamber or other group and uh, start offering something that can be of real benefit to your community. Now, we've been doing these here, uh, Idea Cafe Startup Workshops, for over 20 years, and uh, it's been said by some of the major publications here in town that we've had a big impact. 5280 Magazine says that we have infused Denver with an entrepreneurial spirit. And I think that's true, but there is definitely an entrepreneurial spirit here. We have you know, one or two people who like to take all the credit for that, but there have been other things going on too. You may have been doing some of the things that have helped infuse Denver with this entrepreneurial spirit, but there's no question that there is an entrepreneurial spirit here in Denver. And if we had better leadership as mayor and governor and those type of things, I think we'd be known as, you know, the, the, the peak of the Silicon Valley, but we've had poor leadership, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, until that changes, we're going to have to keep, and maybe the struggle is good for us. You know, I'm going to assume that it is, and, but maybe you're inspired to start a political campaign. Come to an idea cafe, start up workshop. It will help you do the next right thing, no matter what you're starting. If you're starting a project, a campaign, a new career, you want to get into a new line of work, or maybe you're thinking of starting a new business or you've got one underway, uh, Come and share your experience with us. Startup experience is best served fresh. So if you're in the throes of startup, we'd love to have you come and share with us. It will definitely help us and people who share find help from the sharing. You know, sometimes those close to you get sick of hearing about it, but we're sort of a new audience. And it's not intended to be something that becomes a burden for you, but you come to this startup workshop and Join us until you get going. Now, at the same time, now this Praxis Incubator, this is something new, and I wanted to talk about that just a little bit uh, with you today. Praxis is a term uh, that I think you're going to be hearing much more frequently. Gustavo Gutierrez started the Praxis movement in South America and was suppressed, and Pope Francis has just invited him to the Vatican. And uh, I think... Pope Francis over in uh, yeah, South America himself, he saw the good goodness of Praxis. And I think it was suppressed by people who really were not fully informed and uh, got a little bit of a bad reputation. But I think it's going to come roaring back, and we want to help make that happen. Because Praxis is really what Ben Franklin and his buddies were practicing back in Philadelphia in uh, 1727. Franklin was born in 1706. He was about 21 years old, had been to England. It was a bright guy. He'd read a lot, but he was a printer's helper, sort of like he was flipping burgers. And he wondered, 
what he could do to break out of this. Philadelphia back then was even more of a hierarchical society than we live in today, and it's pretty bad today. You can imagine what it was in Philadelphia. Yeah, there were tradesmen's groups that you really had to belong in to be able to start a business. And uh, the requirement was that you have uh, been educated in England. And Franklin, even at that young age, had been to England and had learned a lot about the printing trade there, but he had not been to school in England. And so he was at disadvantage because the clubs that he wanted to get into would not let him in. And uh, he decided that he'd start his own club. And they called themselves the Junto. They met every Friday night for uh, nearly 30 years. Can you imagine that, being a member of something for 30 years? Met every Friday for these long, long, extended meetings. And uh, Franklin called it the best school. He felt it prepared him for the part he played in uh, the founding of this country. Uh, the, the only reason they stopped meeting, and, and this was some 10 years before the revolution, uh, this uh, it was not because of the revolution. This is 10 years in advance of the revolution. The only reason they stopped meeting is uh, they pretty much all died off except Franklin, who lived an incredibly long life uh, for back then. Even today, he was uh, 86, 87 years old. And the average lifespan back then was about 35 years. So this meeting format they developed is something I've been encouraging people to use in starting their own peer advisory group. If you Google how to start a Franklin Circle, my best thinking on how to do that comes up on a wiki. So Google how to start a Franklin Circle, see what that's about. And that's what we encourage people to do when they come to an Idea Cafe startup workshop. But we're taking it a step further. Uh, first of all, we're going to start using this term praxis. And if you Google praxis, you get a lot of good information. Now, the negative, I really do think it comes from people who are either misinformed or uh, are not people of goodwill. They really don't want the grassroots to flourish. Everything that I do is intended to strengthen the grassroots in business and in politics. And so I don't uh, back any particular candidate or argue for any particular issue except preserving the, uh, the grassroots system, uh, the caucus system that we have in Colorado, the best chance the common person has of serving an elected public office. That's why the rich and the powerful are constantly trying to crush it. And the Denver Post let, was, took the point on that and uh, should be shamed for what they did trying to push through here in Colorado Senate Bill uh, 15, 287 that would have killed the caucus. We know it would have it was established a primary system uh, that we've seen it here before. It kills the caucus. And that's why it was discontinued. And uh, they should be shamed. You should write a letter to your editor if you're in Colorado shaming the Denver Post for getting so far out front on that issue. You know, they ran an editorial before the session even started. They had an editorial, and then in the last final minutes, they tried to sneak it through, and we were able to stop it in committee. But it will come back up again if we don't get organized, and that's one reason we're going to pick up the pace on starting these new Idea Cafe startup workshops, because the grassroots, it, it deserves to flourish. And on that one thing, we will, be down at the Capitol, and maybe we need to do some paperwork to tidy up. But I've not kept it secret. This was my personal effort. I didn't say I was there representing anyone because I wasn't. We've been a virtual organization, the Small Business Chamber of Commerce. All you have to do to be a member is to say you're a member. You know, we don't take votes or positions on anything. We're strictly an educational group, but hopefully we're empowering people to go and take effective political action as just happened on Senate Bill 287. I think if I hadn't stepped up, that that would have gone flying through. And uh, thank God it didn't, because it gives us a chance now, uh, barring some extraordinary circumstance, that the 2016 caucus will take place here in Colorado. And hopefully we can be organized enough that that will have a real effect and that we can kind of get the caucus kick-started. When we had the primaries here uh, previously, it just about killed the caucus. And then here came Amendment 29 in 2002 that would have uh, polished them off. 
and we organized Save the Caucus, and uh, despite being outspent 1,400 to 1, uh, we defeated Amendment 29, 60%, 40%, which is a huge victory, because the people who participate in the system love it, and there were a lot of people back then who, who had seen it at their best. A lot of those people are no longer with us, and so we need to uh, be out aggressively helping inform people. We need to get the League of Women Voters back into the uh, – education business. They just are so focused on their issues that they've gotten away from. Maybe it's now time for them to pick back up what really made them such a great organization at one time, which was just trying to welcome everybody that was new to Colorado or new to Colorado politics. But maybe there's a better way to do it. Maybe it's a neighborhood group uh, that you could lead right in your own neighborhood to help your neighbor, your community, and uh, we, we see that as one of the purposes of the Idea Cafe startup workshop, but also especially the praxis that could come, grow out of it when you attend and get the vision of what that's all about. And we're taking it a step further now at our Friday pilot meeting. It's been a 20-year pilot. I'm still leading the group myself personally. Right now we've tried some other ways to get other people involved and uh, – it's been my failure of leadership. We have some really good people, and they've done good things, but it hasn't maintained the consistent uh, consistency. Or it needs to take just a radical leap and become something entirely different. We don't copyright or protect as intellectual property in any way the things that we're doing at the meeting. If you want to come and just start your own thing, we're all for you, and uh, we hope that a lot of people do that. Uh, but when, when you come, uh, you'll see that in this new approach, we're encouraging praxis and small groups that will be born right there that day with subject matter experts that are there because they have some expertise that you yourself feel you have a need for and what it is you're trying to do. It might be uh, a political campaign. We'll have a manager there, and he's willing to lead a praxis group on people who want to run for office, and you'll come and get connected, and then that group takes on a life of its own or remains part of the Small Business Chamber of Commerce. We'll just see how that develops. But we want to stay no dues, no fees. You come, you don't have to worry about being hit by a big bill. And we think if we do enough good work that somehow we'll be provided for. This has been my own personal mission for now over 20 years uh, because I want to try to preserve this country's uh, great ability to foster new businesses like my father's. I was right there by his side. I was only two years old, but he came here in 1949 to start his business in Colorado. And uh, 20 years later, we were able to sell it for cash. It, uh, it, it turned out really well for my dad. He could do it. If he could do it, I could do it. Anybody could do it because it was not some, he, he, was from a very poor, humble background. It wasn't because he had great wealth. He didn't have a, a Harvard education. He had, you know, he studied hard in school, uh, but he had a high school education. He had no inside advantage when he started this business. And uh, I believe that is the American way. Now, if you've got an inside advantage, by all means, take advantage of it. I went to a meeting in the business that we were in the wholesale industry. They have associations that are very important. I went to one of the meetings and they said, well, would all the boss's sons hold up their hands? So I held up my hand and he said, let's give them a round of applause. So that was nice, I guess. And then he said, now how many of you would like to be a boss's son? And everybody put up their hand and laughed hysterically because there are advantages to being the boss's son. That's the other thing that's wrong with our country right now. It used to be that that was a very common occurrence, that uh, you'd go and work with your father, whatever he did. Jesus did that. He worked with Joseph, the carpenter. But in, in this country, it's become, they call it nepotism. It, uh, you know who calls it that? It's the powerful forces that want to kill the caucus, and they want to get rid of family businesses, and they want to have all of us sit in a cubicle and do their work. 
And a lot of those are the ones that support the Small Business Administration. So we need to wake up as a country and look at what this tax-funded mechanism for crushing the entrepreneurial spirit is really doing to America. Well, we're coming up to the end of our time together here. If you come to the Idea Cafe Startup Workshop in Denver or someplace else, you see one, then lead one yourself, an existing group, and then start one with your local chamber of commerce you get something going, we'll include you on something that we've got a bit on the horizon, but it may happen quickly now that this could spread quickly with social media. And that is the Startup Roadshow. And we're going to take it on the road and go from city to city where uh, ID Cafe Startup Workshops have been started to help give you a boost. Uh, if you've got questions about any of this, uh, if you'd like to come to Denver and visit, uh, startup workshop if you'd like me to just explain to you what it is we're trying to do if you'd like to find out how you could volunteer and help us maybe do it just a little bit faster give me a call monday through uh thursday fridays are just jammed for me but monday through thursday give me a call at uh 9 30 10 o'clock is the best time if you want me to pick up but it's a confidential voicemail if you leave a complete message on the voicemail uh, I'll be the only one that hears it. I'm the only one with the code to the voice mailbox. Or call me if you'd like to have a cup of coffee right here at our world headquarters. So you can call me at 303-861-1447. That's 303-861-1447. Now, Sacred Heart Jesuit Retreat House has got the weekend workshop on the 12 Steps coming up. That's next weekend. Uh, if you just Google... Sacred Heart Jesuit Retreat House, Sedalia, Colorado. It'll come right up. It's got a terrific website. And register for that. I'm told that they still have some seats left. And uh, what a great experience. And it's beautiful here in Colorado right now. So if you're out of state especially, take a look at it. Sacred Heart Jesuit Retreat House, 12-step retreat next weekend. And uh, tonight, we'll be at the University of Denver with Socrates Cafe. If uh, you like those late night discussions about life's larger subjects, you might enjoy Socrates Cafe. Come at 6.30 tonight. We're in the Anderson uh, Learning Commons. It's a great place, and we're over by current periodicals at 6.30 to 7.30 every Saturday evening. And uh, next Friday at 2 in the afternoon, we have the Idea Cafe Startup Workshop and Praxis Incubator at Panera Bread, 13th and Grant. Uh, at 6 o'clock that same night, we've got another Socrates Cafe. Now, on Mondays, there's a new meeting, Root and Branch, and it talks about the 12 steps in a general way. Uh, the primary focus is with Alcoholics Anonymous, but we don't focus on the problem. We focus on the solution. What is the 12 steps? And people share their experience about the 12 steps. So if you're new to the 12 steps, come and learn about them. If you've got experience with the 12 steps, come and share your experience with us. And it's called Root and Branch. It's every Monday, 530, 1311 York Street. Uh, it's the York Street Club, which hosts meetings uh, all day long, every day since 1949. It's a wonderful place. So Root and Branch, 530 each Monday. Well, we're running out of time. Uh, time goes fast when you're having fun but give me a call next week love to have you on the show talk about the group maybe you've already started a group with your local chamber if you have I'd love to talk with you about it here next week uh, forward this video along to people that you think might if so, you know someone and they hate their job that's 80% of all Americans right now can you believe that if you know someone that wants to do something different forward a copy of this along to them Post it on your Facebook page, link to it with Twitter, but help us get the word out. Uh, we're doing this on a very limited budget. We want to keep the activities free and open to everyone. Sometimes the people that need the help the most are least likely to pay for it. I've been wearing my Bronco shirt. You know, uh, I had someone tell me this week he thinks I'm right. I have always agreed with John Nesmith that pro sports were going to collapse like a house of cards, and I think we're right there. You're going to see that happen soon. John Nesbitt said that would happen, and it's going to create all kinds of other opportunities when people quit wasting their money on pro sports 
and uh, the alcohol consumption that it promotes. And we're going to have a flourishing in this country like we have never seen before. This is the best time in the world to be alive. And uh, aren't we lucky? You know, but our own individual life is very short. So let's go get started.